app. So, um, all right. They just ran a first aid thing on it and it seemed to make it a little quicker, but I'm getting the, the rainbow that turns and turns and turns, you know, oh, yeah, the processing thing it's process. There's, um, uh, you know, again, I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. It, what's happening is there, the program, something that you're doing in the program or the program is cycling to try to, uh, clarify what it's doing. It's processing and it's running into problems. And I'm not exactly sure why that happens. I have a pro. I have a computer that's pretty much set up to do graphics. I got a lot of RAM and I got a, a strong processor. Of course, my computer now is several years old, so it's starting right. to get old too. But um, that's usually happening when the thing is struggling to process. Right, right. And I'm I'm a little I'm a little concerned about this week because I went over the assignment a few times and it's a lot. And I, you know, the last. Uh, email i sent you with the illustrator native yeah, i got it i'm gonna we're gonna talk about it we'll okay. talk about it later and i'm thinking i better pick one of those yeah to do, to do this week's right um, well we'll talk about it i mean i i have some things we're going to do tonight and i'm going to probably do some of the critiquing tonight but i'm also we also have class tomorrow night so i'll do some right. critiquing tomorrow night you know i got i got a bunch of different things that i want to kind of touch on uh because i want to teach you guys some stuff too so you know We'll see. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. All yeah. right. Um, hi, Sean. How you doing? Good. How are you guys? Pretty good. So let me ask you a question since you're here. Uh, how's the course going so far? Are you okay? Yeah, it's going great. Yeah? You're all right? You have no problems? Um, I wouldn't say I don't have any problems. But <laughs> well, I mean, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm asking no, because I'm concerned. I like to know that everybody's like, okay, and, and yeah, keep in mind, you got Wanda and you got myself. We'll, we'll help you anyway. I'll help you any way I can. So will Wanda. But no, you know, since you're in the room, I always ask whoever's in the room how they're doing so I can kind of begin to gauge how people are doing. Uh, I think everything's going smoothly. In All right. Sense. Not too rough? No. All right. And uh, all right, so here's what I want to do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go over some stuff tonight because I got some interesting things to go over. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about, first of all, I want to point out that in the announcements, there are some very important announcements that I made. These are more than announcements. These are discussions, really. Um, first of all, there's a contact information for Wanda Bryan. Are you guys know who she is, either one of you? I haven't worked with her before. No? no. How about you, Lori? Have you? Did you ever work with uh, Wanda, Lori? Oh, yeah. Wanda's wonderful. The only problem is she's on at night, and uh, I have a real hard time doing this stuff at night. By, the, by 4 o'clock, my brain's pretty fried. <laughs> okay. But, but Wanda is fantastic. Okay. Well, you know, there are other, there are other really skilled people in the Blackboard Center during oh, the day. Yeah. So I've yeah, worked with, I've worked with Mitzi or Misty. I've worked with um, Aideen. I've worked with um, oh gosh, um, I just worked with her the other day. Uh, Search of the K. Uh, oh my goodness. Hey. Okay, uh, I'm not sure who that is. K. Um. Oh, do you remember who that is? Huh? Christy. 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 Oh, okay, Christy. I know who yeah. you're talking about. She's, she's been really fantastic. The only problem with Nadine sometimes is she either for whatever reason is not able to share her screen or her mic's not working, but when they are, she's been a great help. So pretty much anybody I've gone to on BBC has, has been a really big help. Something I will say about Wanda is she's usually doing, you know, three or four classes at once. So yeah. there's a lot of people in there and, um, you know, you, you may get, you know, 15 minutes of help and you may have, you know, a pretty long wait. I've waited an hour and a half for Wanda before. So oh, geez, that's rough. Well, I, I don't know whether I, I mean, you know, you say nighttime's not good for you. I, I'm usually on Blackboard in the evenings, Wednesdays and, and Saturdays. But Friday, I'm on I'm in Blackboard from um, nine o'clock until 12 Mountain Time. If right, that's any right. help for you. Yeah. And you can come yeah, in and I'll work with you. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. So do um, that. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's Friday, right? Yeah, Friday. 
and it's been really difficult this week because you know mom was in surgery and i got yeah. all this other stuff going on and it went okay. for so well you do have accommodation so you're okay i mean as long as you get it done by the end of the course you're right. okay but you have accommodations, which means basically they're they're taking this into consideration and they're giving you a little extra time to deal with this stuff because of your uh, situation. Exactly, and that's really great. But I try not to get behind because then I get even more overwhelmed. And Absolutely, no, I I know. Absolutely, I know exactly what you mean. That that definitely has helped. Um, okay. Um, but it seems like I'm just consistently inconsistent, which really is not in my nature. Like I said, it's just, it's hard to come back, mm -hmm. you know, right. to a program that you haven't used in. Cause like you were my instructor, Bill, when we did the, uh, the kayak company. Yeah. The, the trifold brochure. Yeah, the trifold. Yeah. And right. I wish I knew, well, video, the first live session last week, I wish I knew what I learned that night well over a year ago. And I wish I knew, you know, in the, the kayak one, I wish I knew, you know, I mean, just two or three things, but they're really critical and they can make all the difference. I wish I knew that when school started type right. of thing. So, well, you never know. You never know what an individual instructor is going to teach. I teach, I, I mean, in, in a situation where I'm teaching a logo design like this, I, I know that logo design has to be done in Illustrator. There's no other way to do it. So I, I'm looking at showing you how to do things in Illustrator, and I'm trying to make it an opportunity to, to impress upon all of you that Illustrator can do an awful lot of stuff. And if you see a few of the things that that I do in here, it may not make you an expert, but at least in your mind, you've seen it and you say to yourself, wait a minute now, I saw him do such and such, or I saw him do this, or I saw him do that. And maybe I don't exactly know how to do it, but I know it can be done. And you right. know, maybe I go back and look at what he did and see if I can figure it out. And maybe if, if I can't do that, I go into Blackboard and, and explain the situation and somebody will show me or I find him and in Blackboard and I come in and ask him and I'll show you. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's the nice thing about it. It's, yeah. uh, it's, um, you know, but it's, uh, it's just, it's just, you know, I'm trying to have a good attitude about it and, and be patient, but, yeah. um, there's, so there's Sean, all the let me ask you, Sean, are you seeing anything new or is this all like, uh, stuff you've already been through so far? Anything new happening here? Um, yeah, the logo, logo, I, uh, I actually building a logo and going through the process. Like I, I've designed a couple logos, but actually having a process to follow, uh -huh. um, super helpful. And how about then, how about what I've been showing? Is there anything that I've shown you that you didn't know, or is it all? Yeah, kind of yeah. A lot of those tricks um, I've done other ways, and it's nice to see that oh, yeah. you, you always hear that there's multiple ways to do everything, yeah. but it's nice to be able to see them. That is, it's true. There's a lot of ways. Well, listen, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. So uh, again, contact information for Wanda. Uh, I have three things here that are more than announcements. They're really more like topics, but I didn't want to put them all in the discussion post. I have one discussion post, and I, I'm talking about a specific thing in discussions, but I wanted to discuss uh, logo types, which when I say logo types, I mean the types of logos that there are. So if I click on that, we go in here, and what I'm discussing is the different types of logos. Now, I talked about this last week, but I think I went into slightly more detail here, and I have a lot of samples for you to look at. Very important for you guys, to, if you're going to be doing logos, you have to learn the basic types of logos that exist. These that I'm showing here are the primary types, and more than likely, your designs will fall into one of these categories. My opinion is the most common form of logo created today is this guy right here. The, uh, where are we at? Combination mark. The combination mark is where you have a graphic symbol of some kind incorporated with text. Okay? Right. That's probably the most common type of logo. And, and again, you're going you're gonna to remember this because every time you look at a logo and if you see any kind of symbolism at all with words, you're going to know that's a combination mark, okay? So it's very important for you to understand what you're looking at. 
Now, this one here, you might think is a combination mark, but it's known more as an emblem. And the reason they call this an emblem is because of the way it's shaped and the way it functions, okay? If you look at all of these things, these things are like built. They're shaped yeah. and built with text, okay? Uh, there's the Department of Justice is one very complicated one. There's Starbur uh, Starbucks, and there's the Harley Davidson. So that's an emblem, and they always look something like this, okay? And they are different than the combination mark, because you could almost look at the Burger King and see an emblem, although it is not the same as this. These are emblems. And right. if you really look, there's a subtle difference between this guy right there and those guys right there. Do you see my point? Well, yeah, there's a, actually a circle around Burger King. And actually, these three announcements, Bill, I printed all three of them off. Yeah. Now, another very, the other ones that are in here that are extremely important is the symbols. Now, the symbol is an integral part of the combination mark but symbols can also be used on their own okay they can be used in conjunction with type and it becomes a combination mark or a symbol can be a standalone design a really good example is that guy right there they don't even use it anymore and as a matter of fact the person that designed this was one of my teachers at Cooper Union back in 1970 uh, was 1973 so, uh, give you an idea of, of how long ago it was that I was studying this stuff. Then, up here, you have the, the letter marks, okay, and the word marks. The difference between a letter mark, I mean, look at these things, what you got basically is you got a symbol that's being created with letters alone. Now, often, you'll find a letter mark being used in conjunction with type uh, spelling out the name of what the letter represents. So, so there's your, your, your letter mark for Chanel. And then, of course, underneath it tells you Chanel. Here's your letter mark or your symbolic uh, H, which is the Honda. And then, of course, it spells it out under that. The, the Giorgio Armani is a really good one because if you take a look at it, that's a really interesting G that's created just off of a circle. And he did a great job of doing the A off of the same circle. And again, Giorgio Armani is used underneath that logo. So again, what you have to understand is when you design these logos, part of the whole process is figuring out what direction you want to go in. And a lot of times, the name that you're using will suggest a direction for you to go in. I mean, this Giorgio Armani is absolutely very clever, but I mean, it's logical. It's a very simple thing to do, and it works so perfectly because of the shape of the letters can be wrapped around a circle very easily. Okay, now this is one, this one here, the Fendi and the Chanel. Here they just, they take the C and they revert, reverse the C to create that interesting symbol. And the Fendi, they did the same thing. I'm sure that this is just a variation. They create a rectangular shape out of taking the F and then upside downing it and tucking it in there to create that graphic shape. Okay, uh, this one here, I don't know what G is. I, I'm not sure who this is for, but this is the same thing as the Chanel, or I should say very similar to what the Chanel is doing. And then, of course, the Louis Vuitton is another really good one where you have a very standard V. And what they've done literally here is they've modified or distorted this L. Uh, they took the L and they've actually distorted it. Uh, probably took them, it was probably something that was rather difficult for them to do, but they pulled it off very well, all right? So that's your letter mark, and then, of course, your word mark, Google, Coca-Cola, and IBM. That, actually, that's a letter mark. I don't know why they're calling this thing a word mark, uh, international business machine. So that's really a letter mark. It's in the wrong place, really. But Coca-Cola is uh, a very good example of a word mark, and Google is another one. Okay, so really, we're talking about the principal ones being word, letter, combo, symbol, and emblems. They're, that, those are the primary types of logo. And more than likely, one or more of your logos will fall within that category. The important thing to consider is if, like, for instance, you're going to use 
uh, you're going to use a letter mark like this. Do you incorporate the name? Like this one here, they do. Now, GE, they don't. This one here, they don't. I'm not even sure who this is. G, I'm not sure what G stands for. I don't really know. Um, Louis Vuitton, they got Chanel, uh, the Honda, uh, Fendi. Did, did you say, which one was the GE bill? GE, General Electric, right there. Oh, you said you don't know what what stands. I don't for? know what that G. I don't know what the double G stands for. This is a. This is oh, I believe it's the, it's Gucci. Oh, is that? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I knew it was something like that, but I didn't. You know, again, I didn't know because he doesn't have Gucci on there, and I'm not. I'm right. not one of those people that care about all that stuff. So you know, right. it yeah. kind of doesn't get me. But my point is, a lot of times you'll see they're using the symbol in conjunction with the name, so that's right. something you consider as well. All right. Any questions about that? No, those were actually all three of those uh, announcement links were really interesting. And like I said, I printed them all off, so I have them at my disposal. Good. This is the one that I really want to talk about tonight because uh, I sensed that. And again, I, uh, Sean, did you send me anything to review tonight or no? Yes, I did. Okay, so you have something in here, and Lori, I believe you have something in here, but you're not really done with it. You just got a beginning, right? Yeah, I have no pride in myself, so. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I, I, I'm going to talk. I'll talk about whatever's there. My, my, the, reason, the reason that I, I want to pay close attention to this particular one here is because I noticed that a number of people made very weak type choices. You, you have to be extremely careful when you are building logos to, to try to use classic designs for your, for your logos. I, I think if you go in, let me go back for one second. If you go in here and you take a look at 67 redos, and I think probably all of you have looked at it already, yeah. But if you have any issues or any, you know, you're running into any problems, go in and look at 67 redos and see the directions that they go in. These directions that they go in are more than likely all extremely good directions for you to consider. When you create your design, look at what they're doing. I'm not saying you should copy them, but you should, you, these designs, uh, these redos are done by people who have a great deal of skill. They know what they're doing. And they're doing the right thing. So you can learn an awful lot by just looking at the stuff that they do and trying to find something that sort of matches up with what you're trying to do and, and borrow from it. I'm not saying steal it directly, but utilize it to your advantage. That's why I put it in there. Because if you take a look at enough stuff that people have done, you're going to learn something about it. One of the ways that I learned to be a graphic designer was by looking at everything that I could get in front of me. And I worked with a lot of different graphic designers and, and art directors who really put me through the paces. I mean, you know, they, they tore me apart every chance they had. And they did it in nasty ways sometimes. But the outcome was that by all the tearing that they did on me, I actually learned, learned a tremendous amount because the tearing, you start saying to yourself, okay, what do I need to do to avoid getting tore into like that? And you start looking at the work you're doing and saying, well, I, I should really avoid doing this and I should avoid doing that because, you know, this is not appropriate. This is not appropriate. And then suddenly you realize you're learning all this stuff. And so never be afraid to have somebody tear at you. Now, just so that you understand, I'm not here to tear at you. I'm not here to, to tear at anybody. I'm here to be a friend, a mentor. I'm here to help you in the kindest way I know how to do. But the bottom line is, I can't lie to you. I can't deceive you. I can't shortchange you. If something's wrong, I got to tell you that it's wrong. And I got to give you the best, to the best of my ability, an explanation why I think it's wrong. That, does that seem fair to both of you guys? Oh, I, you're not going to learn unless someone's honest. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I also know that, you know, you guys are busy and you have a lot of things to do. But let me tell you something. So do I. I got a lot of things to do, too, you know. And I mean, when I teach these classes, I got, I don't know how many people are in this class, but probably close to over 20. There's 20, between 20 and 30 people in this class. And I'm responsible for every single one of them. You know what I mean? And I, I, have to, I have to account for what everybody does. And if everybody doesn't do well, they want to know why. The, the, the people that 
you know, I work for it, want to know why. Is it my fault? Is it something I'm doing? See what I'm saying? So I have to try to do the best I can with everybody. And I have to, I have to you know, judge things based on what I see. And I have to try to show you things that you don't know. And one of the big problems I have as an instructor, and I think this is general, is that you don't know the people. I, I mean, I, I know one or two of you guys, but I don't know many of you people. I don't know what you know. And, you know, I could be showing stuff, and some of you are, like, amazed by what I'm showing, and others might say, well, I already know that. You, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Everybody's at a different stage or a level or whatever. Right, kind of, kind of, you know? So anyway, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to moan or groan, or groan or anything. I'm just trying to give you a general perspective uh, of how things are when we get into this class. And you know, again, my my goal is to do nothing but talk about logos and try to give you as much information as I possibly can in four weeks about logos. Make it so that it, like you said, you went in there and you downloaded all this stuff and now you've got some documents that have all this information there that you can keep and you can use for reference. That's why I'm putting it in there. Right. And I mean, I even found a, quite a few, I just did, you know, a logo internet search with all the different kinds of logos. And yeah, that's, that's exactly that. what I wanted you to do. Right. And I mean, like, you know, Pinterest, I mean, my God, you want to talk yeah. about thousands of things. And I, I think um, I tried to get too fancy because I didn't want to be too plain, but the plain seemed like the only thing that uh, my knowledge would allow me to do. So I thought, well, if that's what I have to work with now, that's what I have to work with. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm trying to make the best out of it. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, this is what I have open now is the announcement that I really want to focus on tonight. The reason I want to focus this on this tonight is because one of the things that I felt most uncomfortable with was some of the type choices that were made by some of the students. I'm not going to mention any names, mind you, but there were some font choices and font treatments that I thought were very weak and not particularly good. And so I wanted to just point out how important the use of fonts are to the overall approach of creating a logo. Okay, so what I did was I went in and I identified some of the major types or I should say categories or classifications of type that exist. Uh, and some of this you're going to kind of know about and some of this you might not know about. So anyway, the, the first group, the major group of fonts are called serif fonts. And a serif font, there's a classic serif font right there, Times New Roman. Okay, uh, a serif font is identifiable by the little serifs that you see at the foot and the shoulders of the T, for instance. And of course, the hook and the foot of the I and the shoulder of the uh, upright of the M and of course the feet. So Times, Century, Palatino, Garamond, and beyond, uh, uh, Bodoni. And if you take a look at them, even though they're all serif fonts, they all are slightly different than one another. Okay, they're all serif fonts. Then let's go really far afield and take a look at Tabak. This is a, a newer font, which is completely different than those fonts right there. And frankly, there are probably hundreds of really nice serif fonts available to you to use. Uh, serif fonts, if they're bold, strong, and if you have the opportunity to modify them in some ways, because I'm all about modifying fonts when you're creating a logo. I'm not about modifying fonts that much when I'm working in a brochure environment, like if I'm making a trifold brochure or a product sheet. Believe me, I've done it, but it's not something that I generally do as much as I modify fonts when I'm working in um, a logo situation. And there's a reason for that. If, if somebody hires you as a designer to create a logo, and if all you're going to do is to pick a nice font and set the words up in that font and give it to them, they're not going to be incredibly happy with you because they probably would easily imagine, I could probably get 15, 20 different people to do the very same thing. You know, what they're looking for is they're looking for creativity. They're looking for uniqueness. They're looking for you to add something 
to the font or do something with the font or incorporate the font in such a way that you end up with a very unique looking logo. Now, the, the one problem that we have in our project, in our assignment, is that we don't have an actual client and we don't have instructions coming from the client and we don't have information to bounce off of a client. You can bounce off information on me, but I'm not really a client. I'm not really the original client. So I don't know everything there is to know about the, uh, about the context of where the logo is going to be used. So I have to do the best I can to come up with a justification for what you're doing. If we had a real client, and this was a real logo, it would be a completely different situation because they would be able to tell you a whole lot of specific stuff. You remember I handed you all that, I gave you all that um, uh, questionnaire, right? And, and last week's discussion, we talked about questions that you would ask a client about your, you know, your pieces that you're going to be creating. All this is a way of getting information that helps you target the uh, client and make sure that the product and the logo you're creating for it match up. You understand that, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, it does. All right. Well, we don't have that situation. You recognize that. You can see that we don't really have that. So it makes it a little bit difficult for us because we, that's a part of this whole process that's kind of missing. Okay. And to make matters worse, they don't give us one, they don't give us one assignment. They don't say, okay, you know, we're going to do the ice cream store. You get choices. Each person has the ability to pick one of three logos. So, you know, you, I have some people doing one logo, I have some people doing another logo, and some people doing another logo. It just makes the whole thing more convoluted. Uh, but the bottom line is what we're trying to do is we're trying to create appropriate logo designs. So back to the fonts, Sarah fonts, that's the first one. The next one here are script fonts. I want to caution everybody about the use of script fonts. Now, I can't in all honesty say to you that you shouldn't ever use a script font for a logo. Coca-Cola uses a script font that was made in the 1890s. It was upgraded several times, and it's modernized, but it's a script font it was custom made for Coca-Cola, and it goes probably all the way back to the very first um, bottling of Coca-Cola. Uh, so, you know, scripts are there and they can be used, but you have to be careful with scripts because scripts are not the best choices to use for logos. Another problem font that you want to avoid are the old English type fonts. Are you guys familiar with the old English fonts? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. Yeah. Exactly. I, 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 I so strongly recommend that you stay away from those fonts. I mean, if, if you have a tattoo shop or something, perhaps you might be able to get away with it. But very few companies are going to want to be using um, a, a, an old English style font for a logo. It just doesn't really make sense. Comic Sand, things like this, another font that you just want to avoid, unless you have like a kid's store or something, then maybe you could take the Comic Sand and you could do things creatively with the Comic Sand. The key to this whole thing is trying to imagine context. What is the context of the logo? Who's the client? What do they do? What would be appropriate for them? Am I making any sense at all with this? Yes. Yeah. Are you guys got any questions at all about any of it? No, not so, not so far. I, uh, I mean, script, when I see script fonts, they remind me either of a, a very, like, uh, classic old time, say, a, Italian restaurant or bistro or a wedding. Wedding invitations. Uh, yeah, but a wedding invitation isn't, an, isn't a logo. It's not long term. Keep in mind. Right, but, but that's what I mean. You yeah. know, it's not. Right. A logo, you right. know. You have to understand a logo, when you create a logo, you're attempting to create something that's going to last for decades. And, right. and I, very I often that. script fonts do not last for decades. You're not going to find that script fonts last for decades. Now, again, to go back to what I was saying before, the obvious, uh, the obvious um, exception is Coca-Cola. Because that script has been around forever, 
And it, it, the way they've redone it, and this is the important thing for you to understand, they hired very professional, very uh, talented designers to redesign that logo, to modernize that logo, to make that logo look, you know, good in 2017. And that logo will probably go on and on and on. I don't think they'll ever change it because, again, they've, they've managed to take something and modernize it and make it a unique standard. But a lot of times you're going to find that if you're going to use a script, it's going to be a script that somebody creates by hand. Try to avoid using your standard scripts. Again, if it's a if it's a flower shop or some kind of a place, a chocolate shop or, you know, and again, it all depends on what the circumstance is. Uh, you might use a, a script as part of a logo, not the entire logo. Uh, this will all become easier for you with experience. I'm just trying to give you the general pros and cons of what you should be careful of doing. Okay. You guys got any questions about this, about this so far? No, not, not so far. Another time I see a lot of script is uh, like fancy schmancy salons, that kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, again, very specific types of things, right. you yeah. know? So then you have modern fonts. There are tons of modern fonts. I, I really recommend that as you work on this project, maybe what you should do is just Google modern fonts and see what comes up. I mean, there are some incredible modern fonts that come up. You might want to look into that and see. Uh, the other thing you might want to also look into is display fonts. Now, they generally scoff at using display fonts for logos. However, again, what I always like to do is I always like to take a font as a starting point and I like to modify the font. I like to try to go in there and I like to try to chop the font apart and see if I can make it do something slightly different, something slightly unique uh, to make it a logo. And if I can't do that, then I'm looking to see if I can create uh, the same letters from, from uh, elements that I create. Those are the kind of things that I do. Okay. That, that's what I try to do. Like I would pick a font and right. I import it into AI and I would try to copy it just to see if I copy it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I failed epically. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, you, you know why you're, you're, you're but the, the thing is when you say you failed epically, you really didn't. And I'll tell you why, because at least you made the effort to go in and experiment. So experimentation is not failure. It's just experimentation. Right. And I've exp I got a ton of logos in there that I'm going to show you later on tonight that I've actually kind of developed to the finished degree. And there, half of them are crap. <laughs> Seriously. Right, right, exactly. I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even present half of them to my, to my client. But I did them because it's part of a process. It's a process of elimination. You try everything that you could think of and then look at the whole thing and say to yourself, okay, what do I put aside? And what do I go further with? That's part yeah. of how this works. Okay. I, I mean, I even got my, you know, my pencil and my paper out the other night and it's like, okay, great. I can draw just about anything, but try to bring it in an illustrator and manipulate, you know, that the shapes, the fonts, whatever that I just drew, right. that's where I, that's where my issue is. Well, yeah, but that's something that in time that'll come to you too. That's that's yeah. just, you know, when you guys reach a point with this program, and this I'm gonna tell you something for all of you. This is a great program. Adobe Illustrator is an incredibly powerful program. It's a great program. It may seem hard to you right now, but there's gonna come a day because, uh, again, I'm going from my experience. I remember when I started working with this program, I was scared to death of it, and I thought it was very intimidating, very hard, and I had trouble doing anything in it. And little by little, people showed me things. I knew things could be done. I'd forget what they showed me. I couldn't remember how to do it. And, I mean, it took me months and months and months to finally get to the point where I suddenly, it dawned on me, hey, wait a minute, you've got pretty decent control of this program now. Now I look back, those are years ago, years ago. Now, I mean, not, not that I'm a complete expert with it because I, I don't do everything in um, Illustrator, but there's so much Illustrator that I know how to do now because I've used it for so long that, you know, I have no trouble thinking about what I'm doing and sort of making it happen. And even with something that you sketch out, you may have trouble with that right now, but there'll come a point where you'll be able to know enough about this program to be able to take that sketch and interpret it using the shapes 
and the tools that are in Illustrator. So that'll come, and it'll come for all of you. So just keep that in mind and don't let it overwhelm you now. And it's funny because that's my favorite program. I mean, if I had to choose, say, between, I mean, we're really not going to, you know, create a font in Photoshop, say. No, you don't create anything like this in Photoshop. Yeah. You stay away from Photoshop for right. any kind of vector work. Right. So since this is vector, I would prefer, I much, I much prefer Illustrator over InDesign. And I don't know why. Maybe I'm just Well, InDesign is a layout program uh, and Illustrator is an art producing program. Uh, so you're in the proper program when you're creating a logo when you're in Illustrator. Right. Okay, that, that's a good description. Yeah. So okay. I want to go over these, these tips on choosing the best font for your logo because actually these tips are more than just how to choose the best font. The tips are also, if you think about it, the approach that you should give to creating a logo. Like, for instance, keep it simple. A logo with a clean font is easier to reproduce across different products. Remember that you may have to enlarge or reduce it. Make sure your logo looks attractive on any surface, whether it's a large banner, a pen, or a, pro a promotional material. Now, they are only talking about fonts here, but let me tell you something. The entire logo itself needs to be reproduced and what I keep saying to you guys is always try to think this in simplest terms when you create a logo try to distill your thought down to the simplest possible presentation of the visual that you can come up with it, it it's something that will take practice for you to master but believe me when I tell you eventually you'll get to the point where you will be able to master this kind of thinking and you will be able to master how to bring something down and distill it to the most essential form that's what I'm looking for you to ultimately do see what fonts your competitors are using one of the reasons I went to so much trouble to show you links and to tell you also to go find your own links to look at logos is because we we don't really have the ability to necessarily go after competitors but what we can do is we can take a look at other logos other logos in a certain regard represents competitors too. And if you see what other people are doing, I am sure you're going to find things that you like, that you think are interesting, that you would like to try to do yourself or emulate. And again, I'm not saying copy anything. I'm saying if you like something that you, you see something that you think is appropriate or might be appropriate, you borrow what you need to borrow from it. You don't copy it directly, you borrow from it. Everybody does that. I do that. When I create a logo for somebody, the first thing I do is go in and look for logos that are similar to the product or service that I'm working on. And then what I do is I, I kind of see whether they've got anything that makes sense to me or maybe they don't. And then I get a better idea of where I might head with this, okay? One of the things that uh, a business will do, a corporation will do, is they will pick a particular font. So use a font to reflect your brand identity. The, the, the company that we're talking about here invariably will create a branding manual. One of the elements that they put into a branding manual is a chosen font or a created font. Some companies literally go to the expense of having a font designer develop a special font just for them. Others pick a really classic font, a really beautiful font, an appropriate font, and they use that in their identity. And all the designers use that particular font. It becomes a part of the identity. So a font makes your logo recognizable and memorable. That's why I'm saying to you, be very careful by use, like using things like Old English. Try, try to avoid using things like decorative um, uh, scripty fonts. These fonts really don't work very well for, uh, for logos. You want something which is memorable. And, and usually things that are memorable are very bold and very unique and a lot of times classic but with a twist. So that's, I guess, the best way I can describe it to you. Find out which font suits your company best. It's serious, clean, and neat. These are all buzzwords to think about. Playful, airy, and chaotic. Now keep in mind, you know, something serious, clean, and neat is going to be a, a completely different customer or client than somebody that, something that's playful, airy, and chaotic. Does it communicate novelty or does it cling to tradition and conservative ideas? It really comes down to the particular logo you're creating, the, 
particular client and who the client's product would be for. Obviously, if you're doing something playful, airy, and chaotic, what do you guys think? Who, who might be the client for that? Who might be the person that the, 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 um, the business is trying to approach? Any ideas on that? The, the ice cream. The ice yeah. cream, children, right? Yeah. Kids clothing, kids toys. That's playful, airy, chaotic, right? Correct. How about serious, clean, and neat? What, where do you think maybe that might apply? Possibly a, a museum, a professional buildings. Yeah, yeah, gallery. How about that? How about the art gallery? Exactly. So you, you see, my point is that you, you really need to think about font. I mean, don't just pick a font because you like the look of it. That's the important thing. That's the, one of the first mistakes that graphic designers make. They look at a font. They say, I think that font is cool. I'm using that font. And they make a mistake because, that, because something is cool. First of all, if it's cool to you, it's probably going to be cool to 50 other people. So, you know, you're going to bring this into your client. The client's going to maybe approve it because maybe they trust you. And then all of a sudden, a week or two or a month later, they see it being used here. They see it being used there. And they're suddenly saying to themselves, wait a minute, this is the font that's being used all over the place and, and it's on my logo. Oh, dear God. You know what I mean? So don't pick something because you think it's cool. Pick something because based on what you think, common sense it's going to work in the particular context of the of the logo that you're trying to develop. Does that make sense to everybody? Do you have any, have any problems with that? No, not at all. And I mean, you're not looking for what you particularly think looks cool. You're working for your client. That's right. And when I create a logo, uh, I don't I don't necessarily think about a font from the standpoint of what I like. I have, I have a very specific bias for, ty for different types of fonts for, for different types of jobs. That bias has been beat into me by others that I worked for. Okay, I tend to use, I tend to use a, a bold, very bold, when I create a logo, I tend to use a very bold serif or sans serif font. Sometimes I may go to a lighter weight sans serif or serif font kind of depending upon the circumstances. But I generally stick with a, a traditional serif or sans serif font. I know it sounds very bold or very boring, but that tends to work for me. And again, there's an awful lot of fonts that you can choose, so you don't have to just use Times all the time, or you don't always have to use Myriad Pro all the time. There's a whole lot of different really nice sans serif fonts available to us. How many of you guys go in and, and use um, Typekit? Have you guys ever used Typekit? Yep. Yeah. You know, you know how to use it? Yes. Okay, so you know that you can go into Typekit when you create your logo, and you could scan through the available fonts, and you could see if there's a font in there that's not currently on your computer, and you can bring that font in and you can work with that font and create something a little bit more custom because now you've got a font which isn't on your computer. That's something that you should consider, consider doing. Now, how many of you guys know how to create outlines with your type? Uh, I'm kind of struggling there. Okay. How about you, Sean, Dwayne? Do you know how to do it? you know what creating outlines on type is? Yep, I do it every time. Okay, because yeah. when you send stuff to me or to other instructors, here's the thing that's important for you all to know. If you if I want you to send me a Adobe Illustrator file, if you don't create outlines, and one of you guys did it, I forget which one of you, one of, one of the other girls that sent me did it. If you don't create outlines for your type, if it gets on my computer and I don't have that particular computer, I mean – font on my computer, what happens is the font will, won't display. Now, if you send me a PDF, the PDF will display the font. But if I bring it into Illustrator and open it up, the font won't display because Illustrator, an AI file, is a different file than a PDF. Did you guys know that? Yes. Good. I'm glad that you know these things because these are important things. Huh? Studying a lot on file types because sometimes... I feel like I'm going to have to send files to a client that doesn't have these Adobe programs. Uh -huh. And so I'm trying to find the best program and the best way to get them 
a vector design that they can upload themselves. PDF. Um, well, no, I'm going to go over that. I'm going to go over that tonight or tomorrow night. There are a couple of things I'm going to do tonight or tomorrow night, depending upon the situation. I am going to, I am going to do a little bit of, of um, going to be doing a little bit of um, uh, critiquing, but I also want to show you a little bit about selecting color because that's something I think is very important. I, I give, uh, you're, you'd be amazed if you had me as an instructor before, I go through color a lot, because color is one of the most important things for a graphic designer to know. And I don't think enough people place enough uh, importance on how to properly manage color if you're a graphic designer. We're creating logos, and one of the most important things that we will be doing in creating this logo is either working with an existing branding manual where colors have been predetermined for us and we have to use them. You understand that, right? Yeah. Everybody? Yeah. 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 Or or we are given the unique opportunity to create the colors for the branding manual ourselves. Because to be completely honest with you, Creating a branding manual is a completely different project than creating a logo. You guys know this, right? Do you know this? Yeah. Yes. When you create a branding manual, there's a, there's a whole bunch of things. As a matter of fact, one designer does not create a branding manual. A branding manual is developed by a series of individuals who handle different aspects of it. Okay? That's really – there may be a designer who ultimately puts it together – but there are a number of different people working on different aspects of a branding manual. A logo is part of a branding manual, and a logo requires the use of fonts that either exist or, as I was saying before, you get the unique opportunity of creating your own colors. So one of the things that you have to know how to do is how to manage these colors, how to create these colors. And you also have to know that your logo is going to be used in different environments. It's going to be used in a, in a Pantone environment where they're working with spot color. Do you, have you guys, has anybody ever talked to you about Pantone or spot color? Yes. Good. Yeah. So you know a little bit about that, right? A little bit. Okay. Well, then guess what? When you're creating a logo, that plays into this. And we're going to actually, you know, deal with that aspect tonight. Also, process color, CMYK. You've heard about that? You know that, right? Yes. Yeah. Same thing. That plays directly into this logo. When you create, let me give you an, an, an example of what I'm talking about here. Um, if I'm creating a, um, a flyer, and it's a four-color process flyer, okay? It's a full-color flyer. Uh, if I have to put my logo on that flyer since it's four color process can any one of you tell me do i make my logo uh cmyk or pantone which which would i use i think cmyk aren't they going away from pantone pantone it it is definitely not pantone let me explain why though there's a reason why if you know what pantone is pantone is a color that is specifically mixed. It's a single color that's specifically mixed. A Pantone color is not separated into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. For color process, when you take a color and you, you make it a process color, it is separated into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And what they do is they mix the component parts of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black together to create that color. If you had a similar color that was a Pantone color or a spot color, then that color is a pre-mixed solid color that is not separated. So where's the problem? Here's the problem. The problem is if you're creating a flyer and it's a four-color process flyer, the entire flyer is going to be separated into four films, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Does all of that, do you know all of that? That makes sense. But have you ever heard yeah. that before, anybody? I have not, no. How about you, Dwayne and, and uh, Sean? I've heard of some of it, not all I of it. I've heard a little bit before. Uh, okay, all right. So here's the problem. The problem is if I have a two-color logo and if I send my printer or if I put a Pantone version of my logo 
into a four color process job. The printer is going to get it and the printer is going to immediately recognize that I've given him a logo that's in pan tone color. He will not be able to separate it into cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. He will have to print it as two individual spot colors, which means there are going to be two more plates. So a job that should be four films, four plates, becomes a job that has six films and six plates for no good reason. And the client is going to have to pay additional costs for the additional plate setups on the job. Now, I know I'm way out in the weeds here, but this is incredibly important for you guys to understand. Because again, you do this wrong uh, and it doesn't get caught, you're going to be very embarrassed and you don't want that to happen. So that's my explanation of that. Does that, do you have any questions about it? Did I lose kind it? Kind of. Kind of? Get it. You having trouble with the concept? Um, I, I'm more of a visual person. I, I kind of understand what you're saying, but I, I'm more visual. Okay. Well, it's, it's not something that I can easily visually demonstrate for you. All you have to do is keep in mind that when you're working with CMYK, there are four plates. Yeah. That's, that the, the project is printed on four plates. When you have Pantone, Pantone, the color is an individual color. So if you have a red, like Coca-Cola red, use that as an example. Coca-Cola red, there is a Coca-Cola red, believe it or not. And if, if Coca-Cola wants to get their color absolutely perfect, now, just so that you know, they also have a CMYK version of Coca-Cola red too, okay? But if they want that color to be dead on perfect, what they will do is they will create a four color process job, separate everything out into four color process. And then what they will do is they will supply their logo as a fifth color on a fifth plate and it will be a Pantone red. And they will spend the extra money to do that because then this way they're guaranteed that their Coca-Cola red will be absolutely precisely on the money. And believe me when I tell you, there are companies like Coca-Cola where that kind of perfection is absolutely essential in their mind. Okay? Okay, it makes sense now. Yeah. So, so let's just finish this up so I can get showing you some things. All right, don't use too many fonts. And let me tell you something. One of the things that you have to understand, uh, I'm the type of person that I used one font. The absolute most I've ever used in a font is two, is two uh, different typefaces. Uh, and I use them for contrast. I never use more than two fonts in, um, in a logo. I, I use them for some contrast. What I sometimes find myself doing is I take a font, like I'll use an example, Myriad Pro, I'll use Myriad Pro Black, and then maybe as a, sef, a, sec, a secondary font, I'll use Myriad Pro Extra Light or Myriad Pro Regular. So now I've got the same family, but I got two different font faces, two different font styles. One is bold, extra bold, or one is uh, uh, me, a medium or regular or light. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, this is the one that I really want you to pay attention to. Do not use trendy fonts. That's what I was trying to tell you before. Really be careful of trendy fonts. The trends are short-lived. They're popular today. They'll be forgotten tomorrow. The other problem with trendy fonts is everybody's going to be using trendy fonts. If you think something is trendy, if you think something's cool, don't think for one minute you're the only one who thinks something's cool. Nothing's worse than having uh, one of your clients who you just did a beautiful logo for using a trendy font go to a wedding and find that same trendy font being used on a wedding invitation. You know, uh, nothing's going to aggravate them more than to see stuff like that. So, again, there are literally thousands of fonts from which to choose. As a designer, it's your responsibility to choose wisely. I really can't impress that upon you enough. If you want the business to prosper from years to come, don't let fashion fool you. Pick a font that best reflects the company's values and characteristics, whatever they may be. Like I say, playful airy, chaotic, or serious, clean, and neat. 
Those are just two examples, but you need to, as a logo designer, you need to be able to determine that, okay? I'm done with this for now. I'm going to probably revisit these things tomorrow night, but I want to get in and I want to do some work. Uh, so unless you guys got any questions, got any questions or any thoughts before I end this? Yep. You all good? I'm good so far. Okay. All right. So let's go into Adobe Illustrator. Okay. So this is what we were talking about before, um, Lori. I'm going to you, – you okay with this? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, I saw so shut that save it no um, okay this is this is uh, whose is this Nicole okay Nicole isn't here um, this is a critique now this is the problem I want I want you to see something here um, you've probably never seen this have you ever seen where the text is like that with the red background yeah it means you don't have the font in your there you go you're absolutely who was that who just said that was that you Dwayne no Oh, is uh, Sean? Yes. Okay. Sean, you're absolutely correct. Uh, what's going on here is um, Nicole did not create outlines for her text. So because she didn't create outlines for her text, what happens to me is when I go to look at her um, piece in Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator doesn't have the ability that that a PDF in Acrobat has. A PDF has the ability to store the fonts that are being used in the logo. Did you guys know that? Yes. You did. Okay, good. So when you have Adobe PDF, they, you can store the fonts. You get the fonts. They they they. It may not be the entire font, but it's enough that you can set that that word now the problem is if I open a PDF in Adobe Illustrator the moment it goes into Illustrator I lose that capability and what happens is uh, the the font it, the Adobe Illustrator looks for the font if the fonts not there I lose the font and that's what's going on right here so I really don't know what these fonts look like okay um, so as part of my critique I just want everybody to know that you need to create outlines uh, for those of you who don't know how to do it, all right, I'm not going to mess with hers, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click to place some text right there, okay? That's just some lorem ipsum text, but you can see that's what live text looks like. Does everybody know that? Yes. Yeah, and all I got to do to edit this is double click on it, and I can select it, and I can edit it. Okay, Bill Sweeney. And while it's like this, I can go into my font library and I can change this to Bungie. There's Bungie. That was a, a true type font. Uh, or maybe I want to go with Acumen Pro. And I think the Bungie's better because it's bolder. Let me go back to that. Bungie regular. Okay. So there's a font. Now, let's say, for instance, I want that font as part of my logo. And I want to send it to me for my critique. If I send this like this to you guys, since you don't have that font on your computer, it's going to end up looking like that. Now, if you know that I got this from Typekit, you can go up in Typekit and you can get that. But if you didn't know that, you're going to end up with this. Okay, so how do I combat that? Simple. With it selected, I just go to the Type menu and I come down to where it says Create Outlines. And see what it did? It changed this whole thing. This is no longer live or active font. This is now basically uh, sophisticated basic shapes. That's what these are. Each one of these letters is nothing more than basic shapes. And what does it have? If you click on it, it's got a fill of black and, and there's no stroke on it. So they're, they're basically basic shapes. Now, once these things become basic shapes like this, I can't edit them. I can't go in and I can't change the font anymore. But if you send it to me, after you've created your logo the way you want to create your logo, that font will always stay just like that, and I will be able to open it up. Is what I'm saying making sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah, and I think at first I actually sent you something that uh, in a I don't know that maybe didn't have, you didn't have the font, so I apologize. I should have known better. 
Well, I, I'm, that's why I'm showing you. And when we get into actually working on some of my some of my other work, some of my logos, and I show you how to choose color and how to prepare a piece of art that is going to be used in different environments, such as the web and uh, print, uh, I'm going to show you how to prepare the logo, the final logo. All right, we'll get to that in a little while. Okay. Great. Uh, all in window. Okay, so we have these logos right here. I, I can't entirely tell you what this looks like because, um, you know, the fonts aren't exactly right. There are a couple of things. Uh, I, I kind of like, I kind of like this guy right here. I kind of like this one. I think that one has some potential. And I think out of all of these, I think this is the one that I like the best. However, uh, my feeling is that if you look at that it doesn't look enough like a bagel. What do you guys think? I'm not trying to be insulting now. I'm, I'm just simply trying to point out the fact that it looks more like a donut or, I mean, not even a donut. It looks just more like a tire. What do you think? Yeah. It's maybe it's maybe cool. a little too round. What I, do you think? I'll be honest. I didn't know that was supposed to be a bagel. So it is. That's what it's supposed to be, a bagel. Uh, oh, okay. the, other thing, the other thing I'm not, com I'm not completely sure of, I know it's break of day, but I don't know whether mountains like that have anything to do with break of day. So I would say that maybe that would be an, a, an element that's an excessive element. So what I might do is I might actually uh, hide that element. Let me see if I can get that element out of there. Because I don't know that that really helps you very much, Nicole. Uh, and this thing is obviously grouped. So hold on. There we go. Now let's go. Let's let um, me see. Hold on. Okay. Object, hide, selection. Boom. Oh, all right. Edit, undo. Show off. I wonder if she put the mountains in there because I think it's a, a place based out of Montana. Maybe that's what she was going for. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't know about it. I don't know about it to be honest with you. I'm not sure that it's it helps. Uh, that's why you got to really be careful. Object hide selection. There, I got it. You got to be careful when you choose things, okay? So here's the reason I'm going to this trouble is because I want to concentrate for a second. Uh, let's concentrate, first of all, on the, um, on the bagel itself. Object hide selection. Okay, so you see now I got in here. I missed that. Object hide selection. There we go. Okay, so now I got my element, which is my bagel element. Okay, so there's my bagel element. Uh, I, I see what she's going for. It's close, but no cigar. So what can I do with Adobe Illustrator to try to make this feel and look and seem a little bit more like a bagel? Well, what I can do is I can select this whole thing, okay? I can go to the object menu. I can go down to path, and I can... Add anchor points. Now, has anyone ever told you about this? If you go to the object menu, go down to path, and you add anchor points, have you ever heard about this? I've heard of it, but I've never done it. Okay, well, let me stop for a second, and let me just point this out. Now, each one of there, see all the little anchor points that are in there? Each yeah. object has its own anchor point. Like, for instance, that circle's got four anchor points. That's all it's got. So right. basically, if I were to go in and if I were to start distorting this thing, I would be distorting it on the anchor points that exist. And there's not that many of them. So I wouldn't get a great distortion or I'd get a limited distortion. So what I'm, I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to distort this thing a little bit. But before I do that, I want to add some anchor points to it because the addition of anchor points are going to help me get a more sophisticated distortion. So am I making sense so far? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So go to the ob to do that, go to object, path, add anchor points. And you can see, see anchor points are added? Sam? Yeah. I'm going to do it again. Object, path. Add anchor points, and more anchor points have been added. Now, I, I may actually have enough anchor points right here to do this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the effect menu, and I'm going to go to distort and transform. 
This is an effect, distort and transform. And I'm going to go to Ruffin. Now, there's my Ruffin dialog box. How, have any of you ever messed around with this distort and transform Ruffin? Never. Never. No. Okay. Well, again, what, what we are doing here is we're taking advantage of things that Adobe Illustrator is capable of doing for us to take a basic shape, which is that basic shape right there that we've added some anchor points to, and we are going to play with this and make this thing look different in a very simple way than it looks right now. So I'm, right now, I'm just going to throw preview on and watch what happens to this. So you see what happens? Yeah. Okay, but it's way too much. So I'm going to go to smooth first, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start playing around with the detail. I'm going to start bringing the details down, and I'm going to bring down the size. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a subtle change. See how I'm looking for something along the lines of this. Uh, let's go. I'm going to go like maybe 1%. 1. One. And let's see what I do with the, what do I get here? Uh, one is, that's probably okay. Let's go with the detail. There we go. That's a little bit better. Maybe too much. That's probably pretty good right there. There, hit okay. Now, let's, let's do this. Let's go edit undo. There's what you start with. Edit, redo. Okay? Now, <coughs> what, does that look a little more bagel-like? Yeah, it gives it some texture. Right. Now, what I would also then do is I'd come in here carefully, and I would find my anchor point right there. I think it's that one right there. No, it's not, actually. Let's see if I can get this one. There we go. Oh, and there's a bunch of them. I'm really in trouble. All right. Uh, all right. Hold on. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah. So I'm really opening up a can of worms for myself, but all right, let's try it anyway. I'm going to click on these guys here. I've, I'm, I've got the direct selection tool holding the shift key down, and my goal is to actually select these if I can select them. I don't know whether it's going to let me do it. There we go. There's one, two, three, four. Now, why isn't that one there doing it? Okay, there we go. And I'm going to down arrow it. Okay, I missed one. There it is. I missed this one right there. And I'm going to down arrow that one. Oop. Control Z, down arrow that one. Down arrow. Ooh. More. See, there's a bunch of them. That's the problem. There's so many of the darn things. Uh, there's a bunch of them there. Whoops. That's it right there. There we go. Okay. Now, this one in the front should have some color in it. That's part of the problem. There's no color on that. So let me just do this. Let me set that to, to black and two. And let, let me make the line two, three. Let's go like that. That's probably pretty good. There we go. Okay, so I, it's, it's still not perfect. I'd still have to work on this back one. But you get the idea. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make this thing look more bagel-like. Okay? And I would actually do the same thing here. I'd move that thing in. Let's go to the view and let's go zoom out. And let's go zoom out. Now, let me go object show all. Okay, now here's the problem that I have here. She has break of the day bagel cafe. Now, she did a decent job of this, but the problem I have is that the font she used is not a particularly good font. Uh, this doesn't work very well, what she has here, the, br the break of the day and the bagel cafe. This is too small. And she didn't, she, what she did is she put this on an arc, which is okay. But there's a better way to do it. I would put it on a circle, okay? So what I'm going to do is let me have a second here. Let me just I got to make a note. I want to just I'm I'm trying to show you some things that would be, in my opinion, a better way to go. I'm making notes, so give me a second, and then Bagel okay. Cafe. Okay, now, so I'm going to come back in and let's go edit, undo show all. All right, now, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get my ellipse tool. 
and I'm going to carefully come in somewhere close to the middle. I'm going to hold the shift key down and the alt key down, and I'm going to drag out a circle. And I'm going to try to get a circle approximately situated in about the middle of that bagel. And I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. What do you guys think? Does that look fairly close to you? Yep. All yes. right. Now, get my type tool, get my paragraph tool first. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I do any of this, I'm going to come over here and get my type tool. Now, the important thing for you to understand is that you got the regular type tool, you got area type tool, you got that guy right there, which is type on a path tool. Okay? You guys familiar with that tool? Yeah, I used that one before. Okay. Click on the type on a path tool. Carefully come down here. You see what your cursor looks like? It's the eye beam and it's got that swirly line that's through the middle of it. Click it and place that right on that line. And you see how it set type for you? See how that did that? Yes. I'm going to go to my paragraph tool. And I'm going to make sure right now this is set to left aligned. I want to set it to center aligned. It didn't move very much, but it moved a little bit. It's set to center aligned. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is it's selected. I'm going to type in um, break. Break of the day. All right? Break of the day. Now, here's the important thing. I have break of the day set on my bagel. Now, here's the important thing. See how it's down at the bottom here? See that little line right there? See what I'm looking at? That little line that sticks out right there? That line, if you click on it, and if you carefully drag that line, that line is what oh, I, I got. There. I was going to say, if you bring it in, it also flips the word. Yes, it does. And you got to be careful with that. So I'm bringing it up until I get it at the top. Now, a lot of times what I would do is go to the view menu and I would go rulers and I would go show rulers. I'm showing this because uh, I don't think all of you know how to do this. I think some of you might not know how to do this. I, I don't know whether any of you know how to do it, but there are some people that I don't think know how to do this. All right? So I'm showing this. Now, the other thing that I would do maybe is I would maybe make this circle a little bit smaller by holding down the Shift key and the Alt key, and I'd make it a little bit smaller. The reason that I'm doing that is because I want to select, select the font, and I want to make that font bigger. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to make it 10 point now. I'm going to go 11. 12, 13, 14, let's go to 15, right about like that is probably good. Okay, so we got break of the day. All right, so you can see already, I got, I'm going to pull a guide out here, and I'm going to place that guide, and you can see that it probably is aligned about as good as it's going to get right there, right? What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty much aligned. So there you have break of the day. Now, what I want to do is I want to put Bagel Cafe, I want that to be around the bottom, okay? Now, I think one of you said that if you click on this thing, and if you drag that line inside, it puts the text on the inside, right? Right. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Let's go edit copy. All right, I got this break of the day on the circle selected. Edit copy, edit paste in place. Okay, so what I did was I copied and paste, pasted the break of the day right in the same position as I have the other one. You with me so far? Yeah, you're just going to flip the words and edit it. Exactly. So I'm going to drag this inside, and I'm going to drag it down to the bottom as best I can, and then I'm going to select it, all right, and I'm going to bagel Bagel Cafe. So now I have that, and, and what I'm going to try to do with this is I got to be very careful. You don't want to mess with this. You don't need these things. This is really what you're working with. I'm going to just click on that. I'm going to try to drag that a little bit. Eh, that's probably better. A little bit better, or maybe maybe a little bit more. That's probably good right there, I think. Oh, ah. I dragged it to the top accidentally. 
you know what? I don't care. This isn't. Per I'm just, this is good enough. So now I have this, but it's on the inside. So how do I get it to the outside? Does anyone know how to do it? No. Huh? Flip that arm on there. No. You go to the you go to the uh, character panel, and baseline shift. See the baseline shift. Set the baseline shift. Now watch. Oh, long way. Watch what happens. See how I'm setting the baseline shift? Look what it's doing. Oh, nice. It's setting that font out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is that the font has a wider space because I baseline shifted it than the top font. So what I have to do here is I have to come in and I have to adjust the tracking. Okay? So now I'm going to start adjusting the tracking. I'm going the wrong way. Negative tracking. And I'm going to start negatively tracking it until I get something that's close to the top. Like that. That's probably okay. And then what I want to do is, see how the Bagel Cafe came a little bit closer than I want it to be? I'm going to set my cursor there. And I'm going to come right here to this guy, which is the kerning. And I'm going to start opening up the kerning a little bit so that I get a little more space between the Bagel Cafe. There you go. Okay? Now, I mean, it's not the greatest looking logo that I've ever seen before. But the important things that I've shown you how to do is to take a basic shape and go into the basic shape, add, add anchor points to the basic shape, and then go in and use an effect, roughen, and go in and adjust that shape so that it gives you more of a bagelry or donut donutty look. What do you guys think? Did you learn anything? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Any questions? Any problems? Mm. Not, not till I go to try it. <laughs> Uh, the video, just follow the instructions on the video. That's why we got the video. You go back in and watch the video. It's, it's not that difficult. It, there's a couple of steps that you have to take, uh, and it's really just a matter of taking your time with it and not trying to rush it. You know, I didn't do this. I didn't go in and, and do this in a really fancy way. I went in and tried to do this in the simplest way possible because I'd rather start you guys off simply than throw something at you that's, like, very complicated and make your life a hell. So I'm keeping things simple deliberately so that, you know, you take it one step at a time. Now, I mean, again, uh, has any of you, have any of you done these things, the kind of things I showed you how to do here? Some of you might have done the, the, the type on a path, right? Yeah, I did that before. Okay, so you have no problem with that? No, it makes sense. I got it. Yeah, do you know how you saw how I took it and made it go out to the outside of the, outside of the uh, oval, right? Yeah, I saw that. Okay. All right. Here's the other thing. I, I kind of, so I kind of like that logo. This is what she could do here. I kind of like the break a day logo. Uh, the problem I have with this is that, you know, again, she has a sun shape, but I think you could probably do more with that sun shape. So what I was thinking is maybe what I would do is I would create something that looks a little bit more like a sun. So I'm going to select that shape right there. I'm going to go edit copy and what's very important is I'm going to go edit paste in back. I want to paste the one that I just copied in back of the one that's there. You, you got that guys? Yes. Okay. It's kind of important that you understand they have the ability to do things like paste in front and paste in back because when you're designing things, you have to ask yourself, what am I trying to accomplish? What I'm going to try to accomplish is I'm going to try to make something that looks sort of like rays of sun. Uh, and it, I mean, there's many ways that you could do this. This is just one way that's kind of quick and easy. And I thought I would just show you how to do it. So paste them back. Okay. And to make this thing, I know we're supposed to do this in black and white, but to make it so that it's visually... Uh, easy for you to recognize what's going on. I'm going to change the color of that back object to be uh, yellow or, or golden color. Now, you can't see this because it's in back of that black one. And I actually don't want to deselect it right now because if I deselect it, I'm going to have to go in and, and try to reselect it. And because it's behind something, it's going to be hard to reselect. 
You understand that, guys? Yes. All right. So once again, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to make this kind of look like the rays of the sun. So the problem I have right off the bat is there's only four anchor points. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. I want more anchor points. What do I do? Somebody tell me. Um, Add more anchor points. Path. Object. Okay. Path. Add anchor points. Okay. All right. Can you see it's added anchor points? Yeah, double. Yes. Okay. Object. Do it again. Object. Path. Add anchor points. And now there's more. And I probably could even go another time. Object. Path. Add anchor points. Every time I do this, it adds anchor points. Can you see there's a whole lot of anchor points there? Yes. I got a bunch of anchor points. All right, now, so my goal here is I want rays of the sun because it's break of the day, okay? So what I'm going to do is go to the effect menu, and I'm going to come down to distort and transform, okay? Again, only this time I'm going to choose pucker and bloat. Have you ever tried this one? No. Okay. No. Pucker and bloat. Anybody? No. No. Nope. All right, pick, pucker and bloat. So now what I'm going to do is I got the pucker and bloat uh, dialog box out. I'm going to hit preview, and here, see, it's processing it. Is that this? Oh, come on. Oh, you're at zero. Oh, I'm at zero. Okay, that's why. There. All right, can you see what's happening? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Huh? Okay, or I can go this way and get something. That's kind of cool right there. Man, that's, that's really cool. And hit okay. Now, so, so there's that. Now, another thing that you might want to do, okay, again, ultimately what you're going to probably do with this is you're probably going to take that and you're going to change the color of it. What I might want to do here is since it's break of day, I may want to actually cut the bottom of that circle so that it looks more like a sun coming up. Does that make sense? Cut that mountain shape into it. Either well, I'm you could cut the mountain shape into it, but I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm just going to cut it off straight because I'm I haven't got time to do all that. But it, it'll be the same basic process. Now here's the, the important thing: you have great. this thing here. Okay, uh, this thing is, is an effect. And if you take a look at this, the effect, if I tried to cut this, it would not work. It would, I'd have problems with it. So in order to be able to do what I'm going to try to do, I need to expand my effect. Okay? I need to expand it. It's an effect. An effect is a fake. In other words, it's a fake. It's a, um, how do I describe it to you? It's being generated, that, 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 that thing that you're seeing there is being generated by the computer. It's not real. Am I making any sense at all? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so here's what I need to do. In order to make this real, and when I mean make it real, I'm going to turn it into, <clears throat> I'm going to turn it into a, a complex vector shape. To do this, I'm going to go to the object menu, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to expand it. You see how I expanded it? You see how it's expanded? Yes. All right. Now, I have an expanded object. What I can now do is I can now probably cut this thing successfully. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to cut this thing. I'm going to make a rectangular shape, and I'm going to come here just below the – just a little bit below – my uh, letters, and I'm going to create that shape right there. And I'm going to go edit, copy. So now I've created that shape, and I've copied that shape. You got it? Yeah. All right. I'm going to, and it, this one is now selected. I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm selecting that sun shape right there. Okay? I'm going to come over to my Pathfinder panel right there, right? And I'm going to choose minus front. You guys are familiar with the Pathfinder commands, right? A little bit. All right, well, let me explain to you what's going on here. 
uh, I have two shapes. And that, re that green, um, that orange shape is in front of the black shape. Right. So if I clicked on this one right here, they would join together and I'd have that black shape and that bottom shape is one piece. I don't want that. I want that orange shape to cut away that piece underneath. You understand? Yeah. And I achieved that by clicking on this one minus front. Why? Because the orange piece is in front of the black piece. You get it? Watch this. Okay? Hmm. All right. Now watch this. I'm going to select this piece, and I'm going to go edit, paste in front. So now I'm going to hold the shift key down. Okay? And I have my, I have my, um, actually, you know what I need to do? I need to make this bigger. I need to make this bigger to get the whole thing. I'm going to actually drag this thing out to here. And I'm going to drag this thing out to here, just like that. And I'm going to drag this thing out to here. The reason I'm doing this is I want to get, I want to get all the rays of that sun in, you know, covered by this shape. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Hold down the shift key, and I'm going to select that sun shape. So can you see, can you see how all of my pieces here are all being covered by that rectangular shape correct right. okay yeah. the rectangular shape is in front of that Sun shape correct you, you got that yeah I'm gonna hit minus front and now I hit that and if I come in here and if I maybe apply orange to it let's see if I can apply orange to it there we go I now have an orange Sun if I select both of these things and go object, arrange, send to back, I bring the break of the day bagel into play. And now let's go view fit artboard and window. And you see how we've got a much more sophisticated looking logo? Yeah. That's, what do you guys think? That is really cool. Nice. Nice. So did you learn something? Yes. Yeah. Good. Is it, was I clear in what I did? You guys got any problems with what I did? Is it? Okay, because I uh, the reason I, I say this to you is because last week when I was doing all this, uh, it occurred to me that um, I might have went a little too fast the second night. So I'm trying to go as slow as possible so that what I do makes sense and you can actually maybe recreate some of this if you want to do that. So that is, uh, that is Nicole, and this ought to give Nicole a few days. And by the way, Nicole, I kind of like the font that you use for break of the day. Um, this would be a nice solution if you want to try to consider doing that. Um, it's totally up to you. So let me close on this and save changes. No. And let me go file open and let's go to another one. That's uh, Nicole. That's the one we just did, correct, Nicole? Yes. Let's try Jennifer. Let's open. Let's see what Jennifer's got to offer us here. Okay, Jennifer. So here's Jennifer. Let's go to Jennifer's. Now, Jennifer's... Uh, got some interesting stuff going on here. Um, my feeling about what Jennifer's solutions are doing, my feeling is that these are actually pretty close. Software solutions. I'm not exactly sure what the CP stands for. Oh, Central Park. Okay, so it's Central Park. All right, so Central Park uh, software solutions. So, all right, I like the logo. Um, what I would do with the logo, I think, is I would probably, it's all grouped, object, ungroup. I would maybe, let's see here, object, ungroup. Let me see, I would maybe go, oh man, object, ungroup. She really got it grouped up. There we go. And I think she's got one piece there I didn't get. There we go. I might make this thing a little bit smaller make it a little bit smaller, like maybe that size right there. And maybe what I would do is I would take this thing and I would type in Central Park. This is, this is how I, ah. all right. I would take this thing and I would go, Enter, and then let's 
Central Park Software Solutions. And let me get this out of the way. And then what I would do is I would move this into position like that. And let me zoom in on this so we can see this a little bit better. And what I would do with this is I would take this thing and I would go to my, um, my font, my character panel. And let me see if I can select this whole thing. I can. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually t tighten up the leading. I'm going to bring this thing up to about there. There we go. There we go. There. Okay. So Central Park Software Solutions. Now let's go view zoom out. Okay, now all we gotta do is figure out where you want this thing to go. Do you want it to baseline like that? I personally thought, let me move this over a little bit. Personally, I thought it looked a little bit better higher. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Bring it up to about there. So again, she has what I think are probably some decent a decent logo letter mark CP that works okay and then of course Central Park software solutions I would go to the trouble of, of actually putting the whole thing in there and then having the logo and the Central Park software solutions which then helps that Central Park software solutions to read a little better what do you guys think am I wrong no, I like it and I would, you know, the same sort of things going on down here, except that she just used that that interesting uh, line work here. So I would, I would possibly, you know, I, I kind of, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I kind of like this one. All right, what do you guys think? You guys, uh, creatively, what do you guys think? Yeah, I like the top one better. You like the top one better? I think I do too. I think I like the top one better. Central Park Software Solutions kind of nice and uh, what about what about these two again I think probably what we would end up doing is changing it to Central Park software solutions as opposed to software solutions I'm not crazy about the line work in this because I don't think it would work at all sizes uh, my feeling is this is okay but I think this is a stronger solution what do you guys think am I right or wrong. I yeah, I, I agree. I think yeah, I, agree. I think this one right there, out of all the ones I've looked at so far, is her best solution. But my 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 ultimate suggestion to her is that she substitute the software solutions. I would have her include the Central Park software solutions. And I don't know whether that's the right weight or not. Let's take a look at the fonts here. What does she got? Myriad Pro regular. Let's see what Myriad Pro uh, semi bold looks like. Do you like the semi bold or do you like the lighter better? What do you guys think as uh, as help for me? I, I like the semi bold. Yeah, semi bold look better. Semi bold is better than this. Let me go back to the original, which was uh, regular. So you think it needs to be the bolder? I like this. I like the lightweight because it gives contrast with that. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, maybe you're right. And actually, and actually, it, it is heavy enough that it works. So maybe we'll leave it that way. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. Is that a winner? Yeah. All right, let's see what else she's got down here. Uh, I like this. I like this Central Park right there. And I like that O. I'm not exactly sure what that O stands for, though. Uh, I don't know. What well, do they you asked her some color, so I bet she uses her color in that if she picks that design. I'll tell you one thing I would do. One thing I would do with this is – Here's one thing I would do with this. Uh, I would try this. Let me take my, my guide out. Yeah. And let me take my guide out right about to there. Maybe, no, maybe to here. This is something that she might consider doing. Uh, what she might consider doing is getting this guy here. And let's see if I can, hold on. First, I got to do this. Object, object, lock, selection. Okay. Now, take my direct selection tool and carefully come in here and select right through there and hit delete. And now, take a look at that. See, I think that reads a lot better. Let's go to view guides. Go to guides. Where are we at? Uh, guide 
guides, hide guides. There we go. I think that reads a little bit better. What do you guys think? Yeah. I don't know why that's there. And also, yeah. did I did I actually throw that? that yeah, I think you deleted it. Right. Uh -huh. Let's go edit. Let's go edit. Undo move. Edit, undo clear. Yes, I did. Let me deselect that. Uh, there we go. Okay, now hit delete. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right, get that out of here. That's unnecessary. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? You like that? Yep, I do. Yeah, it looks really nice. I don't know what the O though is. That's my problem. I'm not sure <laughs> what that O is supposed to yeah. be. Yeah, I mean, it looks nice. I just don't it, know it looks it. nice. So yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm going to say that this is a possibility. I don't I don't have a real problem with that. It, you know, again, a lot of times what happens with these things is they um, you make these designs and and the designs are are meant to be you know like. Um, uh, an interesting footnote. Another possibility would be this. Here's another possibility. Just I'm just thinking roughly on this. Let's go object hide selection. Okay, since we have this shape here, and the shape is really just a shape, maybe what we do is this. Maybe we actually get rid of that too. Let me let me get my let me get my group selection tool here. Let me take this and let me delete this. And now let's go object show all. I don't know. What do you think about that? It like I can see it on a business car. Never lie. It's like nice. that, is that, do you like it? Is it legitimate? Do you like that look? Yeah. So there's another possibility uh, for you, Jennifer. I mean, I, I truly do like this, and I, and I really truly do like this. And I think everybody in the room kind of agrees, right? I mean, you guys all like this, don't you? Yeah, let's go view fit artboard and window. So you got some stuff here. Let's go view fit all and window. See if there's anything else. Okay, here's the problem. Now I think this is too much, right? You guys agree? Yeah. And I don't like the fact that she's using this logo. I don't want her using the logo. I don't want you using the logo. Uh, this one, I don't know. I, I'm not. I to be honest with you, uh, I think the two that are winners for me here, this guy right there. And that guy right there. What does anybody else? Anybody disagree, or does anybody want to add anything? No, I, I agree. Either that middle one or the the top middle one. Yeah, I think this is. I think this is. And what I did again, I'm doing this stuff because I want you to think about the visuals that you create and see if there are other ways to go. I'm always, and I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to, to, to make you feel bad when I cut this stuff apart. I'm just trying to give you an idea of when I create stuff like this, how I look at things and I say to myself, what can I do to give myself a different look, something a little bit more, go in a better direction, okay? I happen to know that when you create a logo like this, which actually is not a bad logo, she did a pretty good job on this. I, I happen to know, though, that it's very legitimate to say Central Park Software Solutions, and to have it sitting just like this off to the right is a very legitimate way to go. So that, to me, is a very legitimate logo. And then we looked at this thing, and you had this big O here. And in my mind, the O wasn't doing very much, and it, and it was almost like creating a question in my mind. By removing the, that, that circle from behind the central park, it made it so that the central park is more legible, easier to read. And then by removing it along the bottom, it now just creates this interesting arch which is a nice symbol. I think a nicer symbol than that big loopy circle. What do you guys think? Am I making any sense? I agree. So, Jennifer, there are some things for you to think about. Uh, there are some directions for you to consider going in. Um, and I think, I think your classmates will agree with that. All right? So I'm going to save this one just for the heck of it. And I'll put it away. And let's see. I think we have – it's 40. We have enough time to do one more. Uh, let's go. Who Does anybody in the room want to have theirs done? Let me go open. Who uh, Who's in here who has one that's in here? You, did you want to do yours, uh, Lori? If you want to take a look at it, I'm so far, far behind. All I have are three letters. That's it. But that's okay. I mean, okay. I, I, I looked at what you did, and there's a possibility there. There's Lori. There we go. Okay, Lori, hold on. There we go. Uh, ignore. Okay, so let's go zooming in here. Okay, so here's the thing. 
you have you have potential. The, the stuff that's here has potential. Uh, like for instance, I, I kind of like. Well, I don't know what that is. I kind of like what you got going on here. Let me go to the window menu, and let's go guides. My oh, guys. All right. Let me get this out of the way. All right. So this, I, I kind of like. I kind of like what you got going on here. One of the big problems that you have with this is the way you went about doing this. On, on a certain level, it's okay. On a certain level, it's not. Like, for instance, see this A and that G right there? What I would do, I'm sorry, did somebody want to say something? No? Okay. What I would do, Lori, is I would make these things bigger. I would make them bigger. Okay, like about like that. All right. Oh, okay. Then what I would do is let me get this thing out like this because I like this. I this has got potential. All right. So what I would then do is this. I would bring my guides out. And I might have made it too big. See, this is when you got to fool around with stuff. This is right. the whole key to this. Is that let's go to go to view guides. Uh, where are you at here? Guides show guides. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we got guides out already. I'm going to select this guy right here. And I'm going to walk that down until I get it so that it's aligned with the top of that M. Now, I would there's I would also I would also do this a different way. Uh, what you're doing here, I would do a different way. And I'm not going to get into that right now. But if you want to come and see me on uh, on Wednesday evening, I will show you how you could do this a different way, Lori. Oh, you know, I can't do Wednesday evening. I'm not even going to be here. Okay. Well, that's fine. You can come Friday. That's what I mean. Let's go to view, guides, hold on, guides, and I want to go unlock guides. There we go. Now, a, a G like that will go slightly below. So, actually, I'm in pretty good shape. Look at that. Okay. So, I'm I want to just do that. what I was going for, but. Look, there, that, that to me, that to me has potential. That to me has potential, okay? Now, okay. what I would do with this is, I would do a lot of cleanup. Like for instance, you've got things like this going on here. Right, that's where okay. I was really struggling to get. All that. right, well let me show you, let me show you, let me show you how to fix this. I have 43, I got like about 15 minutes. So let me show you how this could be done a little bit better, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to select this whole thing, Lori. And I'm going to, let me get this out of the way here. Uh, everybody else is cool? I'm going to make this thing gray so I can not see it so much. All right. And I'm going to go to my layers panel. And I'm going to lock that layer. And I'm going to create a new layer. Okay. So now, Lori, what I'm going to do to create what you did, I'm going to use this as a guide. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this. You've got the stroke. I'm going to make the stroke black. All right? Make the stroke black. Okay? I am going to use my pen tool. All right? And I'm going to go to the view menu first. I'm going to go to guides. And I'm going to uh, lock the guides. And I'm going to bring out a guide for here, for the top, right there. And I'm going to bring out a guide for the bottom right there. Okay, so I got some guides. So now what I'm going to do is with my, with my pen tool, let me get my pen tool over here. Okay, bring my pen tool out. I'm going to click with the pen tool here. Okay, hold down the shift key and I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click here. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to click here. Okay, and I'm going to click here. Okay. Now, I have one continuous shape, okay? And I'm going to go to my stroke panel right here, all right? And let me, before I do this, just so that you could see what happens here, I'm going to hide that. Now, watch what happens here. I'm going to get my stroke panel, and I'm going to start bringing my stroke up. Okay. And I'm going to make my stroke about that heavy right there. Now, I can try different caps. I can try a round cap. And then what I can do here is I can bring this limit down to like three. Let's see if that does anything. There we go. That's what we want. Okay. I want that or that or that. Okay. 
that's actually pretty cool. And maybe what I want to do is maybe I want to do that. Do you like that look right there? Yeah. Okay. I do. So now what am I going to do next? I'm going to go edit copy. All right. And, and again, Lori, there's so many different ways to do this. I'm just right. trying away. I edit copy, edit paste in place. Okay. Uh, actually control Z because I, I have, I have to make sure I got this thing properly selected before I do it. All right. Edit copy, edit paste in place. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to up arrow it and maybe one more time. That's too much. Is that about the amount of space that you would want there? Yeah. That's okay. kind of what I was going for, but all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drag out a guide. All right. Now that I've got my guide, Remember, well, there's actually uh, two ways that I could do this. I could either do this, I could either click on the Add Anchor Point tool, and I could come to that intersection, that guide intersection right there, and I could click to place an anchor point right there. Okay. And then I could come over here and do the same thing over here where I click to place an anchor point. Okay? Okay. But I'm not going to do that because I'll show you the other way to do it. All right. Now I'm going to click on the delete anchor point tool and I'm going to click here to delete that anchor point and then I'm going to click here to delete that anchor point. And you see what I have? Oh yeah. And now what I want to do is come over here and click on this tool. The other way I could do this is to simply just come in here and then click on that and then select this and delete that and I end up with my second part of that mm -hmm. M. Right. All right. Now, if you want, edit undo, edit undo, edit undo, edit undo, and you also have that variation there. So it kind of depends on what you really want that to do. Yeah. I'm going to go edit redo because I'm going to bring it to where you created to do it the way you did it. Okay. Redo yeah. and redo. Boom. Okay. So basically now you've got that done. All right. Yeah. So let's go back to my layers and let's bring my layers back out again. And you have the A. Now, again, very simple. All you're going to do is, once again, you're going to come over here, get your pen tool. You're going to click right about there, and you're going to come up to that point right there. Click, and then you're going to come over to here and to that point right there, and you're going to click, and now you've got that A. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to make yourself a cross a cross bar like this. Hold the shift key down and make a cross bar like that. And now you've got that A. And eventually what we're going to do is eventually we're going to outline all of this. But we're not doing that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we will do that in a little bit. Okay? So you have the M and the A, right? And actually if you go to the view menu and go to guides, hide guides, and if you come over here and hide that layer, can you see how that looks pretty good? Yeah. I mean, all of your all of your angles are nice and clean. You got clean foot. Right. You got this has got a nice point to it. If you wanted to, you can come in here like this. I mean, it's up to you, but you can come into the stroke and you can uh, change this thing from that cap right there to the corner cap. See, and you could get that little point at the top. Maybe that you think looks better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now all you're going to do is come back to the layer and you're going to bring this back, and then you're going to make yourself a circle, an ellipse, hold down the shift key, hold down the shift key, and you're gonna drag out a circle. Uh, I wanna reposition this, because it's see where it's not in the same position. Right. I hold the space bar down, and I can now move this thing over to here, let go of the space bar, and I'm locked in, and I can resize this thing until I get it to be exactly the size that I want, and it looks like I'm a little tiny bit off, I think that's probably pretty good right there. Yeah, that's yeah. not bad, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now all I need to do is to do something with this G over here. I'm not exactly sure whether you know what you're doing with that G yet or not. But um, there's a couple of ways that I can cut a hole into this. What I can do is I can come over here and I can get the rectangle tool. And I can come over here. I actually can't do it that way because I have to create outlines on it. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, not outlines, but I'm going to outline the strokes. So now that I've got this much done, these are all strokes. Right. And we don't want them to be strokes. We want them to be filled shapes. Right. 
All right, so we've done this before with my other project. I'm gonna go to the object menu, I'm gonna to go to path, and I'm gonna go outline stroke. When I go outline stroke, what it's going to do is it's going to take the stroke away altogether, and it's gonna turn these shapes into, uh, sh into shapes. Right. You see how they did that? Yeah. Now these are graphic shapes. Now this one here, okay, this one here, there's two shapes. And what we need to do is we need to make that into one shape, okay. right? So this is the only one I want to select, that guy right there. And I'm going to come over here to the shape builder, my pathfinder, and this is where I use Unite. Because if I use Unite, you see how it turned that into one shape? Right. There you go. Okay, now, the reason that I did it this way is because now that I have this thing as a shape, I can come over here and I can get another shape and I can subtract that shape from that shape. Gotcha. Right. Now watch what happens. Minus front. Right. You see what I end up with? Yeah. Yeah. It would not have worked properly if, if I had done it with a, um, with a stroke. Now I'm going to go edit undo okay. because I think what I want to do with this is I think I want to make this thing a little bit a little bit less. I want to get up to that line that you're working with right there. So let's go to about, oh, I don't know. Let's go to about right there. Okay. Now let's try this. So we're going to select both of these guys. And I'm going to again go minus front. There we go. And now what I want to do is I want to start off by making this into a G. And I think I actually want to make this a real G. So I'm going to click on this guy. And I'm going to drag a G. Oh, actually... Hold down the shift key first. Hold down the shift key. And I'm going to drag that line over to there. And I don't remember what weight. I think I used three or four. Yeah, I think, yeah, three or four. Yeah, I, I think it was three. We'll find out in a minute. All right, so now I've got that. And I'm going to go one, two, three. I think three. No, four. Four? Yeah, I think four. Yeah, that's probably what it is. It's probably four. Okay, and I'm going to move this down just a tiny bit. Let me move this down just a tiny bit, and I'll show you. There's a reason I'm doing this. Move this down just a bit, right there. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to go object, path, outline stroke, and I now have a graphic shape. Right. I want to select both of those shapes, and this time I'm going to go into my pathfinder, and I'm going to divide them up. By oh. dividing them, okay, I don't know um. what did it. Huh. Did it do it? I think it did it. Let me go object ungroup. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. By dividing it up, I can now throw away that piece, and I oh. can throw away that piece, and what I get is I get a perfectly lovely G, G that flows right into the circle. What do right. you guys think? Who is? Did everybody – are you guys still here or did you leave? No, I'm still here. Okay. What do you think of that? Yeah, it's real nice. I was actually wondering how you go make do the G for a second. Yeah, so you you got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. So you're learning stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna rewatch the video tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. I understand. Let's go to view. Let's fit our <laughs> window, and let's see what we got here. Let's see where we are with this. So let me come over to my layers panel and let's hide that layer. See, and this is where you are. And I'm to tell you something. Um, you know, I really mean it, Lori. This is really not too bad. Now, I don't know. You, you still have to work out what to do with that G. I think something still needs to be in that G. I mean, you did something over here. Right. Exactly. You know, I, and I don't know what you need to do to make that G work. I mean, it's possible. This, let, me, let me just see here. Let me, let me just try something stupid. Because, again, I, I get ideas, and they just come, and I, I have no idea whether I'm right or wrong. Let's go edit, copy, edit, paste, in place. Okay, and then let me drag this thing over to here. Okay, and let me do this. Let me let me rotate this thing until it's rotated like 45 degrees. And this may not work. It may not work at all. See, it begins to look like an L. I think that's the problem. Yeah, yeah it's not going to work because it looks like an L. And I, I, the only thing I can think of is is to put another line underneath the horizontal G part. 
Mm-hmm. The only thing I was thinking, I don't know. Well, what you could do is... I think you, if you rotated that G like 20 degrees... You know what? That's a good point. Let me try that. That's actually a pretty solid idea. But before I do that, I have to combine this into one piece. Okay? Now let's try it. Let's rotate this guy around and, uh, and see. Hold on. Actually, I've got one other tiny little problem here I noticed. I got an extra anchor point that I don't need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on that anchor point to delete that anchor point. So now, what I'm trying to make you understand is there was an extra anchor point in there. And believe it or not, that little anchor point might have affected the way that that line looks. By removing that extra anchor point because it wasn't necessary anymore, that anchor point to that anchor point is all you need. You right. make a good point. I don't know who is that. who is that who just made that point. About rotating it? Yeah. I did. Sean. Sean. Good idea. So let's try rotating this and see what we get. Actually, that's cool. Look at that. What do you think? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I like nice. that. I really do. I like that. Now, this A, now that I'm looking at it, this A can come up a bit. It can yeah. come up maybe to there. That's nice. Yeah, this is nice. So, Lori, my yeah. my point is, you know, you were in a panic. You were in a panic uh, about not getting something done when, in fact, you were actually a lot closer to having something done than you might have even guessed. This is actually a pretty nice logo. Now, what I would do to make this logo completely whole is I would come in here and I would add... The name. Yeah. And I don't exactly remember. What is it? Metropolitan Art Gallery. Art Gallery. Oh, you know what? Let me do it one line then. Yeah, there you go. Gallery. Metropolitan Art Gallery. There. And then what I would do is I would line this thing up, get it lined up right about like that, and I would simply enlarge it until it fits right on a cross like that something along the lines of that and then what I would do is I'd move it down underneath it something like that nice. that's nice it is there you go I wasn't too sure about the um, you know their original logo with the frame and the pictures and well, the whole point is you're trying to make something much nicer. This is very, what, what you have here, Lori, is very artistic looking. Uh, so talk to me, guys. What do you think? You guys like this? Yeah, I think, Lori, you need to be a little bit more, um, uh, give yourself some more credit. Yeah. Thanks. Nice, it's isn't been, it? it's been uh, really tough with everything else going on, and I'm just, I'm just a stress case. <laughs> well, Lori, let me, let me explain something to you, okay? I, all I did... All I really did was I went in here and I just cleaned up what you did. You, right, this right. Is, I, didn't, I didn't design this. You designed this. I just showed you a better way of executing what you did. Right. I really didn't change it all that much. I mean, we did yeah. do one little thing where we rotated the G. But yeah, that that, this is idea, basically yeah. your creation. So, again, don't underestimate yourself. That's why I was telling you when you were sending me the email, we'll get you straightened out. We did. Right. This is nice. This is a very nice logo. It's, so, it's this is the direction that you should head in. It's very hard to do when my mind is not clear at all. Well, yeah. I showed you some stuff now, uh, yeah. and you're, you're good to go. You're in good shape. So, I can just forget about the, their frame or? Yeah, of course. No, you're creating a totally new logo. You're, I mean, oh. you're, you're creating a totally new logo. That's it. You forget about what they have. I don't want any of you right. to do anything that, 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 that's existing. I want you to come up with your own thing. Now, look, we're out of, we're out of time for tonight. We have a lot to do tomorrow night. So listen, please come back all of you tomorrow night. Listen, here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow night, I'm not going to go through all this nonsense and announcements. I want you to look at announcements. Tomorrow night, I'm going to finish up going through the, uh, I'm going to finish up going through the, uh, the um, critiques. I'm going to critique what I have in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you how to take a logo, my logo, and I'm going to show you how to get the correct color for it. And you're going to create your own color. 
And then I'm going to show you how to save each one of your logos in a different file format for a different purpose. One will be for the web, one will be for print, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that tomorrow night. Are we all good? Sounds yes, good. and guys, okay. really, Any? I really appreciate your feedback. And well, yeah, that's why we had to critique. Yeah, Sean, I, I did kind of mess with the rotation of the G. I was having a hard time with the scissors tool, and that's as good as I could get it, but Thanks well, just remember, we're keeping all these. These are supposed to be super simple it. designs. <laughs> just remember, be, com be confident about your design. They're supposed to be simple. Yeah. That one little tweak that he did with that G, right. that's your whole design right there, minus one line. Yeah, really? Yeah, it's really nice. And this is a this is a very sophisticated design. Uh, I don't know whether you people are familiar with the arts and crafts movement, but what I would have you do, just out of curiosity, is when you get out of here, Google arts and crafts design and take a look at arts and craft design and tell me that you don't think this MAG looks just like the kind of stuff that they did in the arts and crafts design. I think you're going to be amazed. It's uh, it's funny you mentioned that, Bill, because I actually went back to a class where we did the Bauhaus movement, arts and crafts. Yep. And found something that I did way back then, and I had the M kind of, except with the with the up, without the upper V above the M, and I thought maybe I'm just going to go with this. It's simple. It's clean, modern looking. So nice. You did a very nice job. I think you did a lot better than you even guessed you did, you know? Did so, yeah, good job. Very much. I really are, you are you surprised? You know, I'm, I'm not really surprised. I'm just, I'm tired. Well, okay, <laughs> I mean, that's it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I'm But tired. now you're optimistic that you got something to work with, don't you? Right, and I was really worried that, oh, I don't have their frame, even though I knew that we were going to redo the whole logo. I was kind of worried because everybody else had, an, they had a kind of an artistic other element added to it. No, I think if you did, if you did this logo, if you concentrate on this logo, yeah. and if you execute this logo the way I executed this logo basically tonight, I think you're going to have a very nice logo to work with, and that's yeah. what I would recommend that you do. I'd focus on this one. You don't have to go any further than that. This one's, yeah. as I say, I really hope that all of you take a moment and go in and just look at at arts and crafts and see how close this resembles an arts and crafts. Uh, type treatment it's amazing this is the one i drew on paper last or two nights ago yes good excellent okay guys uh yeah any other questions have a good night all right i hope you guys come tomorrow okay okay all right thank you have a good night you too